a toast to interplanetarians making connections. Okay, I want to do that bit again. That's really hard. I know. Oh, you <laughs> I'm like, I'm so glad this isn't me right yeah. now. Okay, I'll do it again, yeah. From yeah. the start. We established a nationwide radio play competition called Centre Stage where everyone all over the country could submit in radio plays of between 7 and 15 minutes in length. We had four winners um, winning $500 per winner. So we got 22 plays submitted to us. And then from there, we had three incredible judges who went through and whittled down to eight finalists. We then did little audio grabs of each of the eight finalists, just like little 30 second grabs, and put them on a web portal where we played them and listeners could vote on their four favorites. So we offered an incentive to listeners of, um, they won theater tickets and movie tickets if they voted. And we got 170 votes for the winning four plays, which was great. And so the next step that we had was casting the plays. So we had some fantastic, fantastic talent at Joy. Um, so we've been recording all weekend and directing some of our presenters into becoming radio actors. No, I don't even want to do this dance. Well, we have to do it. It's drama class, not dance class. I know you can do it. I've seen you do it. The first read of yours You're... was more natural than the second yeah. in that first bit. Have your actors actually feeling like they're doing the movements of the character? So if there's a scene with dancing, it sounds ridiculous, but get your actors to dance because your voice changes when you're doing a movement. So, unfortunately, some of it can be a bit embarrassing and it will take a little while for your actors to warm up. So make sure you're in a safe, supportive space with people who are going to throw their absolute all into the production. And hopefully what will come out of it is an incredible radio play which your listeners will enjoy and that's important to your community. This is the first time I've been in a radio play. I've done a little bit of acting before. I was in a pantomime once and some circus shows, but this has been a really cool experience and I've been really excited to be involved. And one of the things about doing a radio play is because the audience can't see your facial expressions or what your hands are doing, that all of the emotion and all of the intent has to be really clear in going into uh, the voice um, and I think as well by having sound people and radio people who are much more have much more expertise than me <laughs> and they know how to make um, voices and radio sound different by changing the distance from the microphone or the angle or the way that the things are edited or processed. The biggest thing is getting that realness from your actors, making sure they understand the characters, they know the motivation and don't be afraid to stop in a recording, if you think a line should be said in a different way or you feel like the motivation for that line is wrong, just stop it. You can record in different segments, you can do whole chunks, and then if that's not working for the actor, break it down into little bits where they're very clear on their motivation for that piece. Um, well, the process of recording is kind of interesting. We record usually out of sequence because we can never get the actors uh, in the same space at the same time. So we record bits of the script um, as we find actors and as they're available. Uh, they get handed off to our editor, Kyle, who's amazing. And Kyle sits with the script and the first thing he does is identify which pieces of audio hold which lines in the script. So he creates a, a workflow assembly. Um, and what will happen when you first get a finished workflow assembly is the lines repeat. So you get a, a play that's 10 times as long because every line is repeated nine times. Um, then what he does is he listens to each version of the line and picks the one he likes and creates the final from one line out of whichever take the best line was. So the director has created all the options of the lines, but the editor is the one that picks the final line that actually gets used. That was uni, 1993, with a very cute boy called Ian. It's important to read through the scripts first, to have a sense of what the story is saying, and then to ask the questions of the director so that you've got a sense of where you're going. I'm certainly not an actor. I'm someone who's come to radio with a, a keen interest in jazz and I love presenting the jazz show, but that's just me talking to, to my listeners. It's not me being a part and trying to get into the part. It's, it is very scary and very challenging, but once you've got a director who gives you just might be a couple of words that all of a sudden the penny drops amazing things happen you screech is more of a guideline yeah. because i feel if it's too much of a screech it's going to be unpleasant yeah yeah yeah. once we've actually got something that resembles you know the script 
then I can actually dig into the um, into the performance side of things. So that's finding the best takes, um, editing things, sometimes using um, single words or, or you know one half of one take, another half of another take. Um, adding in pauses, taking pauses, whatever just ser best serves the drama really. One of the things we've been doing here is we've been having actors not super close to the microphone. When I'm talking in a room with someone, um, you don't get that proximity effect, it's not as, as bassy. So you want to back off from the mic a little bit, hear a little bit more of the space. So you can create uh, location via sound effect, you know, the sound of a train gives you train station. And it's it. It's it one second and you know exactly where you are. Uh, and the rest of it just flows. Record your actors when you can get them. Don't worry about the fact that you want to try and record the whole thing in one go. You'll never do that. Um, just record lots of takes. Every time you think you've got it, do one more anyway. Uh, give your editor as many takes as possible of every line. Um, but it's really simple to set this stuff up. You can do it all with something like Google Forms. You know, you don't need uh, a whiz-bang website to do it. Google Forms will let you accept file submissions like PDFs for your scripts. Um, SurveyMonkey will let you do surveys. And a survey could be how you vote. You know, just pick the ones you like and you list all your scripts and you get people to rate them out of 10. And that's kind of what we did with Joy. To get submissions, people need to know what you're doing. So we had ads in Time Out. We got hold of all of the not-for-profits that we know, other community radio stations, the community radio network, and they sent out the message to their followers as well, to their networks. So we got as many people as possible to know that we were doing this competition and there was a cash incentive for the winners. So that's why I think we got so many entries. Some of the pitfalls are your content. Um, I, I think you need to look at who your audience is, what you actually want to get across as a message. Centre stage, one of the things that I really loved was the diversity in, in, in the writing forms. Um, and yes, they were sort of centred and focused around the GLBTQI community, but there were so many other underlying issues that, that were tackled. Yeah, I definitely recommend it. And it's fun. And it's, yeah, now something I can put on my resume, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Radio play actor. <laughs> And zoologist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was awesome.